Hello everybody, my name is Kai Wenner and I work as technology evangelist for TIPCO Software. Today I want to introduce to you the cloud native microservices pattern Circuit Breaker and how you can implement that with Netflix Hystrix open source framework and TIPCO Businessworks container edition. So before I begin with the technology, there's one interesting slide from Gardner to talk about which shows a distributed microservices architecture. I do not want to go into too much detail here and we all know about microservices and how to develop them and deploy them independently of each other. But the key of this slide here is to show you that um, the complexity has moved and increased to the outer architecture. Therefore, now we do not have monoliths, but um, very small and lightweight microservices. But now we have a lot of new other challenges, like how these microservices communicate with each other and how they are integrated and how you solve failover, load balancing, date, uh, discovery of services and many other things. So really the complexity has moved to the outer side. And that's uh, displayed in a great way by Gartner here. This is just the motivation for why we come to new cloud native design patterns, which you had not to think about before, but now they are very important to be successful in your microservices projects. And for that today, I want to show you a specific design pattern which is used more and more in microservices projects. It's called the circuit breaker. The circuit breaker is a resilience design pattern and it is used to prevent cascading failures. That means now where we have all these distributed microservices, where we often do not even know on which server or in which container they run, what's the IP address and how you discover them. All of that is done by the cloud platform under the hood, like Cloud Foundry or Kubernetes or by your own Docker environment. And therefore, um, you have to think about fallback options and how to do fail fast and rapidly recover from failures and problems. The circuit breaker is now shown here on the right side. Let's explain it to you in, in a short minute or so. So the first thing is, and the circuit is closed in the beginning. That means everything is working correctly. All service requests to your microservice are successful. Therefore, this is the ideal um, situation, so no problems. But often a microservice fails. And in a distributed architecture, it might have many different reasons. And um, the issue here is that we don't know that. But um, if it fails too often, we want to do something. Because if you have hundreds or thousands or even hundreds of thousands of service calls, it costs you a lot of um, service requests to do all these calls calls and computation and memory and so on. So we can configure the circuit breaker that it stops trying these requests because we know that the service will fail anyway. In this example here I have configured it like maximum failures is five. So if five service requests to your microservices to fail then we open the circuit and therefore we do not get new requests. New requests incoming are rejected automatically. This is done until the timeout is, is over, so this is the uh, configured in one minute. So after one minute, we try it again with a new service request. If it's still not working, then we keep it open and then we keep it one minute or maybe we even increase it to two for eight minutes. And then later we try this again. So if the service is available again, then we close the circuit breaker again. And in this way, we really have this cascading failures, which we prevent to do, because we only have a limited number of service requests. And after we know that a microservice fails, we do not need to forward every request to it. And this is basically this resilience design pattern of a circuit breaker. How do you implement that? There are several options. So you can, of course, implement your own logic for that, or you use an existing framework. The most important or most used one is Hystrix, which is an open source framework published by Netflix. As you probably know, Netflix is open sourcing a lot of microservice frameworks and Hystrix is one of the most relevant ones. You can find the code on GitHub and you can use it in your projects also um, very easily. And therefore that's also the project that, which I will use here. So here's an example of the Hystrix dashboard. Here on the right side you see a more, let's say, um, production system with several microservices which you monitor and where you see what's going on. 
Let's take a look at one of these in a little bit more example. And by the way, I have taken this from a great 10 minute video, which shows you an introduction to the Hysterix dashboard and what all that means and how that works in a production system. And here the, the key things to understand is um, here we have the size of this um, one microservice and it shows the traffic volume and the health and so on and its color. So here on the, so we see a red one, this one is failing right now. And uh, I do not want to go into too much detail, um, um, but, um, but, here, but here in requests to this microservice. On the other side, you can also have failures, which are red. And then if there are enough failures, though that the circuit is closed, then you also see rejects, which are here in blue. So these are really the key three numbers I want to show you. Um, it's the green one, the successful ones, the red ones, the failures. And then when the circuit is closed, then we have the rejections in blue. And with that, let's think more about TIPCO and how we configure it here. So TIPCO Businessworks Container Edition is a cloud native middleware implementation. And we support frameworks like Hystrix out of the box via configuration. And I want to show you how you do that. Um, here on the right side, you see two processes. They are very small here, and I do not want to go into detail because that's not the point of the session. So here, really, you have one REST consumer application in Businessworks, and you have one database REST service, which does a request to a Postgres database. And the one service calls the other, and we use it for the circuit breaker to show you if um, the database call fails, then we have an error. And um, with this way, we want to use the circuit breaker here. In our service, so in the left service, we simply have configured this. So here again, you see this is out of the box support via configuration for the circuit breaker. And in this case, um, I have done some configuration. For example, I say in the Hystrix dashboard, my name is BWCE service. And I have configured some thresholds. For example, I say the circuit breaker request volume threshold is 2. That means that we start early thinking about do we want to stop um, and open the circuit. In a realistic real-world application, this is maybe 50 or 100 or 1000 before we think even about starting and, and opening the circuit. But for demo purposes, I have it here with um, only two service calls and we need a um, circuit breaker error threshold percentage of 50%. So if we need at least half of the service's failure before we open the circuit. And then we also configure how long the sleeping window is before we close the circuit again. And in the end, with all these configurations, you can configure whatever you can also do in a circuit breaker implementation like Hystrix. And then um, here you also see an example of the BWCE documentation where you get all the details of um, how you can do that. In the following demo, I will use BWCE 2.2.0, but um, we will, of course, support in all future releases. Here is the demo environment. So um, this is a typical environment we use for many of our cloud-native middleware demos, where we have middleware on the left side, but also coding, for example, with Java. We use some kind of um, DevOps infrastructure with things like Jenkins and GitHub and some kind of scripting. And we have these cloud native frameworks like um, Hotel Cloud Foundries, um, um, Configuration Management, or Console, or in this case, Hystrix. And we have different cloud platforms. And either you can use just a container based infrastructure or use things like Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry. And also, of course, often you use Meshery for API management to expose your services. In this same demo, we really focus on the circuit breaker. So I only use three components. I use BWCE for developing our middleware services. I use Hystrix server for the circuit breaker. And I use Docker containers. So all you will see in a minute is used via Docker. But we could, of course, also leverage Hystrix and console and so on in the same way with Kubernetes or Cloud Foundry or other cloud native platforms. So now after a lot of introduction, um, we want to now go to the live demo where I use BWCE, Postgres, Docker and Hystrix. Let's move over to my VM. And first I want to show you um, the IDE. 
In the IDE, I have one implementation of my um, database REST service. As you see here, without any coding, I have developed a REST service, which is natively supported by BusinessWorks. And here I do a JDBC query. Um, so this is very simple stuff. So I simply ask in a customer database for a name. And in my example, the only name which is valid are, uh, here is Chris. So also if you see, thanks Chris for helping me preparing this demo. And um, we either get the value back or otherwise this service throws an exception. And this is used also for the circuit breaker then, so that we say, okay, the service right now fails or not. This is just for demo per process to show you how to implement this. And the second process is a, a simple business works process, which calls the other REST service here. So this is also very simple stuff just to show you how to implement the circuit breaker. And that's the key point here. So to configure this service with the circuit breaker, I just went to the um, resources part. And here there is the HTTP client resource, which you know when you implement REST resources for business works. And here you see a lot of configuration. And here is one advanced part for the circuit breaker. In the same way, by the way, we have other ones for security or for service discovery with tools like Eureka or Console. But here we use the circuit breaker configuration. And here is what I already showed you um, in the slides. I configured it with a threshold percentage and volume threshold and so on. And what I did now, I already um, built an application out of that. Um, in this case, we are right click from the IDE. But of course, this could also be done via Jenkins or Maven and other automation tools for DevOps. Let's take a look at uh, the um, what I did. So I already have built a Docker image out of that. Here we see our Docker base image for BusinessWorks Container Edition apps. We see our um, REST service. This is the database service. And we see our Hystrix app. This is the second service which we configured with Hystrix. In addition, we also here we have a Postgres Docker container which um, includes our database. So these are the containers we use. And also I have started Hystrix here um, in my... In my um, terminal. So here you see some exceptions because a service was not available. But basically the main part here is you see I have downloaded Hysterix dashboard um, for my local uh, instance on Amazon and started it here via Gradle script. Of course in the same way you can use any public cloud service for Hysterix or any of your other installations where you have Hysterix running. This again is just Halo World stuff here. And so um, with that let's now take a look at the web browser. So in the web browser, um, this is the wrong one, let's go here first. Here now we have our um, containers so uh, running and this is my um, business works application which uh, calls the database. It's a very simple one and here you see I can add Chris and then it responds to me with the information from this customer Chris. So this service works and if I do something wrong, like I add a Cree, this one is not available and in this for uh, demo purpose it throws an exception because this way we can show now the service is not valid this way okay so and then we have a second service this is in the end just um, calling my second um, Hystrix application so here um, if I call it it always works and here I add the parameter I don't show something here, um, this could be implemented better, but this is really just again for Halo World to show you a service call um, and then how to see how Hystrix monitors that. Let's go to the Hystrix dashboard. This is where you configure it and you know if you use this from Java or Spring or other services, you use it for business works and middleware the same way. So here we configure to monitor our stream of information and events. In this case, I only monitor one stream here from our BusinessWorks application or service. We do not use a stream aggregator like Netflix Turbine for that. So it's again here the simple one. And then we add this stream to monitor it. So let's go back to this one here. And now I have a second browser window. Let me make this one smaller. Okay, and on the right side here now you see the Hystrix monitor. This one is configured to monitor my business work service here. So here you see BW service. And now every time I click here and do a request to my service, again, this is the service 
which uh, is monitored by Hysterix. You see here now our tool. And oh, this is green and worked. And this one is calling the other service here with the database stuff. And this one is always working because I use Chris and so it's not uh, throwing an exception. So the dashboard is not 100% real time. And also this is, I think, just a hello world app from Hystrix to, to find it out here. Of course, in a real world project, you might use something like Tipco Live Data Mart, where you have real time streaming analytics and can do proactive actions and much more powerful things without coding. For, for the demo here, it works. And now um, let me do one more or so. And it's also, again, a time frame of, I think, I configured 30 seconds where it monitors this circuit here. And the circuit is still closed and all of this works. And now let's create it with an error. So here now we will see um, we create one error. So here you see a red one. And let me do um, two or three more errors. So um, after here you also see the the graph here is changing, so here now we see a lot of errors. And here now the error rate is at least 50% or more. And with that, we configured it this way. The circuit now here is open instead of closed. So if we do now a new request, and even if it is a good one, it is blocked and rejected, right? Because here we see in blue now, it's rejected because our circuit is open for the, uh, for the number of seconds we configured it. So I think I configured it for 15 seconds. So if we wait a little bit more, it will be closed again. And here it is. Now it is green. The circuit is working again. And if we do another request now again, it's going back to the green one because it's accepted again. And this demo simply shows how you use um, TIPCO middleware services in combination with Hystrix to implement a circuit breaker pattern so that you can really implement cloud native middleware services which are resilient and where you can reject services and all these kind of things. And as you have seen, it's pretty easy to do and you can do very cool things here with building cloud native middleware microservices. Thanks for watching.